So Shockwave, most docs charge like $100 or $150 to visit for yeah. that. Um, so you've done three of those. Mm -hmm. What else have you tried? They call it just mm, Just most of this kind of in-range mobilizations, no real like, okay. costing or anything like that. Okay, cool. Um, what else have you tried? Anything else? Yeah, I've tried Shockwave. Yeah. 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 It definitely bothers me when I'm doing like a P to A anytime I'm doing uh, any type of it's loading from like I to S, so it kind of jams up into that AC joint. Um, okay. Not usually, but it has recently, like earlier, like mid last week, it did. Like, I'm not a right side sleeper predominantly, and I hadn't really messed with it. And then I woke up and it was kind of gave me issues for the rest of that day, but then after that, it was. Well, Good question. Yeah. Trauma. What's that? Trauma? Yeah, yeah. Fell on yeah, it fell on it and it was like a high, yeah, hyper abduction there, so it really flexed. Is this the only area that you feel? Yeah, like yeah. Symptoms? yeah it's it, no no radiating, it's really just kind of point tenderness and I can feel it right there. Yeah, my finger starts to grab and I can kind of compensate and get it past that end range and get to mm -hmm. full extension, but or not full. I get overhead press position, I still feel that sharp. Okay. Feel, like instability so, in there too. At all? Um, there is some clicking, um, some clicking in there as well. But uh, they, like collegiate baseball player and collegiate coach for a while, so a lot of overhead throwing, so a lot of uh, repetitive use for uh, probably a decade, I would say, and then mixed with. Ooh, that that's, right. that's a good question. But getting the background, a lot of times people play college sports or or like the minor leagues or something like that and they won't bring it up. So, good question, good question from all of you. Hold this in, don't let me pull. So this doesn't work at all, this is your lap. Um, typically I would start with the stronger side, but I uh, know that he's hung out in my office a little bit, so he understands what I'm trying to do. But to show them what it should feel like, go to the good side. Um, and this doesn't work at all. But if you take your hand, you reach around the front and you touch right here. Yep. Hold it in, don't let me pull. And you feel how that works. Yes. Okay, so that's like step one of what I call the wow factor. You have to show them that something can change. And it has to be like noticeable to not only to you, but like sometimes people will bring in their partners or someone else. And so it's useful when they can understand like, oh, there is something happening. Um, that's the problem with our profession is just cracking things. You never really know if it helps because a lot of patients tell me like, oh, I have my husband or my daughter crack me. So like that doesn't really mean something's good just because you hear it crack. So this isn't working well, I got that. And it takes like nothing for me to move him just so you guys can see like the side of my finger. And he is strong, I should not be able to move him on the finger. Hold that there, I'm pushing down, don't want to push. This works really well. And I'm just looking at the main movers of the shoulder, especially the ones that were involved in that injury. Hold that there. I'm pulling down, don't let me push. Okay, we all have that. Kind of slides down. Seems grimace. I was wondering what your face was like. And that feels great. Tell me about the grimace, where did you feel? Just, yeah, that right at the top there, right at the AC joint. That sharp, or reproducing that sharp pain that I feel. Uh, that's really frustrating because that means like anytime you're like reaching for things, yes. like in your cabinets or whatever, it makes it hard. And I think it's important that you tie in the movement to something that they experience. Because then it, it isn't just like an arbitrary test and that's what's wrong with like medicine in general. It's like we run through all these like tests and all that and maybe it hurts or maybe it doesn't. People don't really care if they get a positive campus or they have a positive SLR. But if you say like, so it does hurt when you do this, then they they really relate to that because it, it is making sure that we are talking about the same exact injury, the same exact feeling that they're feeling. Now. So hold that in front of you, and this doesn't work very well. 
Hold that there. I'm pushing down. You're not just taking it. That's cool. Uh, hold that right there. This doesn't work. Okay. So when I do this and I stabilize this one, and I stabilize the shoulder blade, hold. It works really, really well. So I'm keep pushing on that point to show you guys. Do you feel a difference there? Yes. Okay. So why? I don't know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, so what we're doing is we're basically <laughs> stabilizing the scap. So what's happening here is the shoulder blade isn't sliding the way it should to get him all the way up there. And so if we can kind of nudge it and get it moving in the right direction, then things are going to be happier. What I mean by things are going to be happier, the muscles fire. They activate the way they should. And so for him, so far, everything I've seen, and the only one I didn't show you is this one, Hold that there. For your grimace, take this hand, squeeze here. One thumb and thumb. Hold it, don't let me hold. Is he grimacing? Is he grimacing? <laughs> Smiling. Oh, it feels a little better when you're doing it. Yes. Cool. So, what is that telling me? It's telling me there's nothing that I'm that freaked out about. So, I want to know that my shifting the way his body moves will activate the muscles that I want. If some of those tests didn't work, specifically if two of those tests didn't respond to my wow factors, then I would be thinking, okay, let me get an MRI. Let me figure this out. There's something more complex here. So all of our tools, MRIs, x-rays, labs, they all fit into what we're doing. But to have the tools to move the person's body around and get more info than what they're used to seeing, uh, gives you a huge advantage because most people I've seen three to five other practitioners by the time they get to me, but no one has shown them that something is an immediate change. So simply squeezing this and turning things on, they're already like, wow, something's happening here. This is a different approach. Cool? So we should start fixing it. So um, you're an intern. You've gone through a lot of informed consent. Do you feel comfortable with me treating you, knowing all of the yes. two-page form that you have patient sent? That's very We did a verbal informed consent. Yes. Let's look at a few other things. Let me have you lie down face up. So at the last class that we taught, we had another shoulder issue, and I went through it, and then all of a sudden there was like this wild card, strange thing that popped up at the end because I didn't go through my normal protocol. So I wouldn't typically teach this during a quick class like this, but we're gonna do like a brief overview, even though it looks a little bit complicated and maybe even strange. But we're gonna go through it, and that's eye testing and how it affects the patient's perception of where they are in space. So let me bar your arms up here then. Hold that together, don't let me pull. Good, just with your eyes, look to the left. Good, look down a little left. Good, down towards your toes. Over here, over here, over here. I'm gonna explain it to you all in a second. Eyes up here, good. Eyes up here, great. Left eye closed, right eye closed. And he passed all those tests. So sometimes someone will shut off in one of those eye directions. And we always think of eye movements when it comes to cranial nerves. So cranial nerves are firing directly from the brain. I don't know where you all are in your program, but I'm sure at some point we can learn all this. Um, and so looking in different directions, checking different cranial nerves. And so I'm just making sure, A, that they can do them all, and that they all have some kind of brain trauma. Like who knows from the skateboard injury, and he didn't tell us exactly the date, but he could still have some signs and symptoms of a concussion. And so that gives us a chance to kind of dive into that. And it kills two birds with one stone in the sense that you're looking at how they can multitask as they're using different cranial nerves. So he was able to do them all. I'm not at all worried that there's some like higher level uh, neurological like complexity happening here. It seems really straightforward. So let me have you sit back up. Any questions on that? So far so good. Cool. So again, to recap, we have three huge muscle movers that weren't working. Hold out there. This one. This one. And then the lap down here. Hold on there. And I'm curious about this last piece. Hold this here. I'm going for it. And that one works. So um, 
Cool. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reset this big joint here. Um, many of you probably do a version of this at, with, when you're working a clinic. Um, I like to make sure that, I mean, I'm asking permission before I reach around and touch someone, but I'm gonna reach around and grab this elbow from this side, it kind of feels like I'm giving you a hug as I get a And then what I found on this one is you wanna kind of move the person around for a second to let them relax. At first, they're kind of tightened up. And then when you go for the thrust, you wanna bring them to traction first um, before the thrust. You feel that? Yeah. Okay. So it's a big one, and a lot of times it's, it's a little bit tender. Yeah, and it hurts it. Yeah. So it kind of feels like, oh wow. Um, but within probably 20 to 30 seconds, it is like, oh, okay, that feels a little, a little bit better. So let's see. Hold that there. I would guess that this is going to be stronger, and it feels stronger than me. Push. And so on him, I'm really, really pushing now because he's strong, and I'm trying to show him that it's not like I'm just pussy putting around on his arm and just pretending like I'm pushing. Um, but I'm pushing like four times harder than I was before. Um, so that's cool to see that it's engaging. And what I know is if we can get the stability around there, hold that there, um, then I know we can decrease inflammation in the pain and then the function can So on this one, this is an AC joint. How many of you see AC joints frequently? How do you adjust it? Down. Down? Okay. So for this one, because of the way his arm went all the way up like this, I think what happened is he sort of like opened up the AC joint a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna approximate the AC joint by squeezing it. This takes a lot of energy, um, but typically you only have to do it once. What? I will almost always tape it after that. Yeah, that's an awesome question. So taping is, is a great opportunity to help people hold their adjustments longer. I think it's critical and I don't hear it enough when I'm working sports council events with, with students that we tell every single patient that kinesio taping was invented by Fairbank because they see it on all these professional athletes and Olympians and it's important that they know, like this was an invention that was started by a chiropractor to help his patients hold their adjustments longer and be able to return to sports faster. It just is a piece of history that is useful to tie in what we're doing and, and making it clear that athletes have been utilizing chiropractic for a really long time. And whether or not they're a professional athlete, they're in the right spot. Cool. Um, so for this one, I'm gonna squeeze it we're both gonna make funny faces, so please ignore. Um, oh, sorry for her, take a breath in. Uh, we're gonna do about 10 seconds. Good. Another six. Three, two, one. Who's redder? Come on, man. It's a tie. Okay. So it hurts a lot. Um, in my office, I'll use an Arthur stem, which kind of goes And so I don't have to be full exertion. Um, I know there's not one in this room, so this is what I would use if I don't have any tools. But the Arthur stem being able to quickly um, impulse into it makes a really great uh, impact into this AC joint. People always ask me, like, can I use my Hyperbolt? Um, Hyperbolt has blown up in the last year or so. Um, I bought one hoping it would be something I could use when I'm going out to events. Um, and I did not find that it was useful on the clinical side. Um, it is useful to kind of like calm certain muscles down. Um, but compared to the uh, tools that I'm using in my office, it's not given the results. Which makes sense. I'd be kind of pissed if I spent like two or $3,000 for uh, impact tools like Arthur Stem and Vibrocessor and they came out with like a $350, $400 tool that does the same thing. Um, but just so you know, they're gonna ask you that question. It's not the same um, as just the frequency level and the impact and the range of vibrations. Um, so uh, for this, remember how this didn't work? Hold that there. And now it's much happier. 
Can you tell that? Yes. Okay, cool. So, for this one, hold that there and pull it forward. This still doesn't work and that's kind of our last piece. Um, and for this, again, I would have a, I would use an activator on this. Um, it gives a longer lasting result than using my hand, um, but I'm gonna use my hand to adjust that AC joint. Uh, so turn them this way, and I'm gonna go here, here. and hold it up there. Oh, that was a lot, a lot stronger. Cool, so now stand up, kind of move it around. Yeah, that's definitely a, It's like 70% better, 60% yeah. better, 50? I'd say definitely 70 for sure. Okay. It's not, uh... So this is a good a good result. Typically I want at least a 50% improvement in each visit. Um, if they're under that, I'll say like get back down on the table and let me try to figure out what's going on. But I did see once you stood up, there's something else going on. So I always watch people walk at the end and look at their posture to see if there's something I'm missing. And there's absolutely something I'm missing here. What am I missing? Lie face down. Uh, so that's Spinal scapular movement is a little funky. Um, so that makes sense. The spine is critical to making sure that everything is moving also for the innervation into a lot of these muscles. So if it's not moving the way it should, uh, you just adjusting extremities isn't gonna be enough to do the long lasting relief. So hold that right there. I'm gonna push down a little bit higher. Don't let me push. That looks good. Hold that there. I'm gonna push it. Don't let me push. And you feel how that doesn't work yet. Okay. Hold that. Turn your head to the right. Hold. Okay. So it doesn't matter whether his head is down or in the center. That's the lower trap. Lower trap is critical to making sure that your shoulder blade is moving the way it should. Um, we see that. Uh, lower trap movement ties into uh, the mid uh, the mid thoracic, and so for this, I'm going to use a hamstring, and this this is something new that I haven't done with you all. Uh, I'm going to use a hamstring as an indicator muscle. So what I mean by that is hold that there. It's strong. Relax that. Let me look at the other side. Hold. It always gives you an opportunity to look at their shoes and their wear pattern. And he's got a little more wear powder on the left side than the right. Um, but they're both a little worn on the outside. Hold that there, that feels strong. Hold that there, that feels strong. So, as, as just a muscle, it is strong um, when I'm testing it. Now I'm gonna use it as an indicator to something else. So if I come up here and I push on that, it's probably a little tender. Yes. Hold that there. But if I do this, it's mushy. So, can you guys see how he's trying really hard? Ben, you're trying, right? Yes. Okay, so it doesn't work. So what I'm doing is I'm stressing on a joint not at all related to the hamstring. And I'm looking at, when I do that, is your body able to respond as quickly as it should? And what I'm looking for is, is your brain getting overwhelmed by stress signals from other areas? So it's harder for it to respond to the other stuff that's happening. So our brains are really good at multitasking. But if they get a whole lot of information, it kind of bombards the feedback loop and makes it harder for your spine. So for this, I want you to take a breath in. I'm going to adjust the strong and then breath out. Good. Anything I'm going to worry about before I adjust it? No. No pre-existing no. breathing. Cool. Take a breath in again and out. Cool. So you can Sweet. And that moved really well. Um, Hold that there, I'm pushing down, push, and that feels much, much shiny. Do you feel different? Yes. Okay, two more muscle groups. Uh, put a fist here and a fist here. Uh, elbows up in the air, hold that right there. I'm pushing, don't let me push. And here I'm pushing, don't let me push. What muscle is this? Teres major. Teres major, awesome. And now I'm gonna test the teres major together. Hold that there. And you see how that doesn't work. Watch this. One at a time, it's awesome. Like, really incredibly strong. But when I ask him to coordinate the two, they're mushy. 
So, um, this is a little bit more than what I was expecting to show in this little lunch, but um, what it's telling me is the muscles are strong, they're just having a really hard time coordinating their movement together. This is critical for people who come in and they're trying to improve their posture. And that's happening more and more. We all know we're using our devices all the time. And we're also noticing how we can even see in our photos, how we're slouched compared to some other people. So in a new way, probably in the last year or so, I'd say like 15 to 20% of our new patients don't have complaints other than posture, that they want to improve their posture. And so it is impossible for him to have strong posture when he cannot coordinate his various majors to work as a team. He's really awesome at opening a door or doing a row, but when he has to hold the shoulders back for an extended period of time, he can't. That's because they're not coordinating their movements together like this shit. Um, so for this one, it's related to uh, more in the thoracic spine. And so for this, I want you to think about them. It's not going to be a popular use again. It's more of a quick stretch here. Okay, let's try this again. Hold that there. Push. And if you had a drop table, it would be much more comfortable and more efficient. But again, I don't have all my tools here, but I still think we can make an impact. And you'll see this a lot when you're working events. You don't have all your tools, you should have at least one or two ways to handle every single condition, even if it means it's a little less comfortable for the patient. But if I had to bring everything from my office, I have like a 5,000 uh, pound air compressor drop table and I have all these different tools and so it would be really difficult. But as long as you have a few ways to do it on tail, I think it's, it's important. Then when you get your office set up and you start making a little money, you start buying the right tools. Um, but in the meantime, just sort of warn people. So it's gonna be a little sore for a bit, but it's not gonna be terrible and you'll feel better. Fist here, fist here. Hold that together, don't let me push. And you feel how that works? Yes. It's way, way better. Stand up now and move around, and I'd be surprised if it isn't an extra like 10% better. Okay, and then What's it like now? Still had a little bit of the sharp pain at the end range, but now it's just like a very, I mean, I hardly register with it. It's soreness. It's like a mild soreness? Not, not even, I mean, I think just because I know it's there, I yeah. still feel that area, but it's not the sharp pain as it was before. Cool. Yeah. So that's awesome.